Blessings, my brethren. Blessings to you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to give thanks to God and give glory to the Almighty God for bringing us once more in our teleconference. We do worship and glorify Him because He's worthy. He's worthy of all our praise. And so we are here to give Him glory and to give Him honor. I do observe my son Delhi on his day from the United States. Greetings, my son. God bless you and um, God bless every one of you who are here on our teleconference service. We went to church today and we had a wonderful time in the Lord, worshiping the Lord and giving Him praise and giving Him glory. And surely the Lord is good and the manifestation of the Lord in the house of the Lord was awesome. I was blessed today and I know why David said hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It was wonderful. It was awesome. And so thank God for all you, my brethren, who are here with us today. And we just want to glorify God. And I'm going to start with a prayer, asking God to bless and touch and um, take control of our teleconference service. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are giving you thanks. We give you praise and we give you glory for your goodness and your mercies and your blessings towards us. Thank you, Lord, for our spirit life and that we are here today to give you thanks and to give you glory. Bless everyone that attend this teleconference, Lord. Let your hand be upon them. Let your anointing, hallelujah, be upon them. Lord Jesus, right now I'm praying for my my this young son in the gospel, um, Marcus, who has said to have got the coronavirus uh, positive. But Lord Jesus, we know that you're able to bless and to heal and to deliver. And also his sister and his mother who is so troubled, my God. Hallelujah. You said in your word, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And we are thank you, Lord, that you are God that healeth, because we know whenever we call upon you in faith, trusting and believing, Lord, we know that you are able to deliver. You are able to sustain us. You are able to heal us. Hallelujah. You are the great physician. You are the sympathizing Jesus. And we are giving you glory right now. And we are giving you thanks. And we are giving you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless everyone that is here on our teleconference. Bless everyone, Lord. Touch everyone, Lord. Anoint your people, Lord. Hallelujah. Strengthen your people, Lord. Heal your children, Lord. Hallelujah. And remove every doubt and remove every fear. Hallelujah. From the hearts of your children. Because we know that you are God. Hallelujah. You are powerful. There's nothing impossible for you to do, my Lord. There's nothing hard for you to do, Lord, because you are the creator of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. And all power is in your hands. Thank you, Jesus. So we praise you right now and we glorify you and we bless you on behalf of those who are afflicted right now and those who may be suffering right now, Lord, from this virus. Hallelujah. I'm asking you, Lord, Lord, to touch them, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm asking you, Lord, to give them deliverance, Lord. I'm asking you to lift them up, Lord. I'm asking you, Lord, to come in your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come in your holy anointing and just a touch my God. Hallelujah. And all is well. We praise, we glorify you, we magnify you, and we leave it all in your hands. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brethren. Sister Clark, I can hear you. God bless you. Bless you, brother Amen. I may have to mute some of you because there's some interference. So um, fortunately, I have to mute you. And you can unmute yourself. Um, but I'll have to mute because I hear some interference there. So I'm going to mute, mute All everyone. All participants are muted. And they okay. can unmute themselves. God bless you at this moment. Um, Sister Clark. All participants are unmuted. Um, I will, it was, we had a wonderful time in the house of the Lord today. 
and we were blessed. And, uh, yes, I was appealing to. I know, I know, I know. Yes, Pastor said, but we had a blessed day today, and we give God thanks for thank His God. presence thank and for God. His goodness to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But the Lord, Amen. the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord was in His house. Amen. Amen. And Amen. you know, when you're in the house of God and you feel the anointing of God, you feel okay. It doesn't matter Amen. what goes on outside. Hallelujah. But when we are in the presence of the Lord, the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there are fullness of joy. And at His right Amen. hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So we fear not. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we are children Amen. of the King. We are children of the King. Sister Clark, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you as usual to read the scripture for us. Um, yes. God bless you. And um, we are praying Amen. God for you. We are praying God for, for healing, you know, and yes, for yes, deliverance yes. And, and to strengthen you. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Because we know you're a faithful, faithful child of God. We have um, a couple of our brethren. Um, one of our brethren has got um, apparently coronavirus, but we are praying for that individual named Marcus, brother Marcus, the guy who was recently baptized and the enemy has attacked him. But you know something, our God, hallelujah, our God is great, our God is powerful, and our God is mighty. Amen. Amen. So we know whatever it is, anything that the devil throw at us, we can we can send it back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We can rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We can bind the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we can claim deliverance in the name of Jesus. So fear not, for the Lord of hosts is our refuge. The word says the Lord is our refuge and strength and a very present help in time of trouble. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Sister Clark, if you have a pen, I'll give you scripture, and um, you can find it while I continue. I will continue praising God. As we it is taken from Genesis chapter 18, and verse 16 on to verse 33 at the end. Gen yeah? yeah, Genesis 18 to the end. 16, verse 6, start of verse 16 and to the end. God bless you. Genesis 18. Bless you. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we give God glory at all times. You know, um, so many things are happening around us, brethren. But you know something, the, the, the good thing is that the Lord had told us that in last days, perilous times will come. And we will see these perilous times. And you know the good thing about it, the Lord prepared us for it. 2,000 years ago, while He was on earth, while the Lord was on earth, walking among men, He told His disciples all these that we see today. So, as children of God, we, do, we know the word of God has to be fulfilled. Because Jesus said, the heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So we have confidence in the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask our dear brother David. Brother David, are you there? God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. The faithful son of God. I'm going to ask you to sing for us in a little while. Um, um, I know we have heard about Marcus and we are praying for him. And you know, we have, when we pray as children of God, we must pray with total confidence. Yes. We can't pray and have doubt. We have to pray in confidence. And we, I, I have confidence that Marcus will be well, and his sister uh, Rihanna will be well, and the, um, their mother will be comforted. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Because, you know, why it makes me so happy is because I serve a true and living God. And not only because Amen. He's true and living, but He is good. Hallelujah. The writer says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. And I've proven Him. All these years I've walked with the Lord, I have proven that He's a good God. 
He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a God that sits high and look low. Amen. He's humble. And His truth and His judgment is just. Amen. So we thank God for the God we serve. We, uh, the Bible says the Lord is a present help in times of trouble. He's our refuge. He's our strength. And a present help in times of trouble. If I have a God like that, I'm going to be happy all day long. Hallelujah. I'm going to be trusting in Him all day long. I'm going to remove every doubt. I'm going to move every fear. And I'm just going to lean on Him. Songwriter says, leaning on Jesus. Hallelujah. Safe and secure from all alarm. Hallelujah. So brethren, we are here leaning on Jesus. Hallelujah. Because we know He's able. God bless you. I'm going to invite Brother David um, to sing a song for us as the Lord lead you. Brother David, over to you, please. Amen. 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 First in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So wonderful. I truly believe in times of trials, it's the time that we must praise God even more. Amen. It makes the enemy mad. The enemy will always try. And I understand what I'm seeing in my eyes. I'm not deceived or confused. Or my faith hasn't withered. You know, the Bible says, the Bible tells us that we must put on the whole armor of Christ. Amen. Finally, mm -hmm. God comes and comes. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we know that's undefeated is the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Never loses power. Never loses power. Amen. So there's a song that I heard um, that's been on my mind for a few weeks now. And it brings me back to my, my, my days when my grandmother was alive and she used to go to church and they would sing this song and everyone would join in. You could feel the fire and the power Amen. that comes from this song. I'm going to sing this little a verse in the chorus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And it goes like this. It's this. And the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley for the blood that was that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power I said it will never lose its power for it reaches the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley for the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose it will never lose, it will never lose its power one more time, my brethren. For it reaches the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. For the blood that gives me strength, from day to day, it will never lose, it will never lose, it will never lose its power. Amen. 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 God bless you, my dear brother David. God bless you. Hallelujah. You know, we glad we thank God for the blood. The blood that hallelujah. That gives there is a blood that gives us strength from day to day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. Hallelujah. The blood from King's, from King's Palace 
to Papa's gutter. Hallelujah. The blood reaches everywhere. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. God bless you, my brother. Continue to glorify God. The Lord has blessed you um, with a wonderful voice um, to bless his people. And we thank God for you. And may we continue to continue to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I know our God is, is able. He's able. I know my God is able to carry me through. Amen. God bless you. Um, Sister Claire, before I go any further, I'm going to ask you to read the scripture for me. Um, then I'm going to ask Brother Clinton to, to give us a, a prayer before I go into the word. God bless you. Sister Clark. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And let's read from Genesis 18, chapter 18, starting from verse 16 to 33, the end. Amen. And the man rose up from hence and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to the justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whatever they have done or do or accordingly to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men, and the men turned their faces from hence, and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there will be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are there within? That be far from thee to do after the matter to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in certain fifth the righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. <laughs> and Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am that thou dost and dust and ashes. Sorry. To adventure they shall lack five of fifty righteous will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And 
he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. For adventure there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. To adventure ten shall be found there, and he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. 33 and ending, and the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communion, communion, communion with, with, Adam, with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Here in the reading of God's word. Amen, amen, amen. 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 God bless you, Sister Clark. Bless you, Sister Clark. Thank you for that reading. Thank you. Thank you. Brother Clinton, I want to be a short word of prayer for me and then I we go into the Word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Brother Clinton. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening again to tell you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Father, to bless each and every one that will be on this um, the conference service, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus that whatever will be said, O oh God, that will be a, it will be a, a pain in our heart. And I thank you for your love and your kindness towards your children. I know, dear Lord, that our brother, our sister will be giving the words, Lord, and I ask you to touch them from the crown of their head to the soul of their people, God. I thank you right now. I pray to you and I give you all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Brother Clinton. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We give God thanks for his words to our hearts today. And you know, you know, this thought came to my heart that, you know, we, the children of God, should have a spirit of intercession. You know, because this is what Abraham was doing. As we know the story well about when God called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldees, he said to him, Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. That's a big order. But Abraham was obedient to God's calling. Amen. And he went out from his land. The Bible says he sojourned to a land that he knew not. But Abraham had many wonderful qualities and if we think about some of those qualities that Abraham had he was a man of peace and he was a man of faith and you know he was also become a friend of God and you know when Amen. God acknowledged you so much that he that God says he he, he liked Abraham because he wouldn't do anything without talking to Abraham first. And that's a great, that's something to think about. The Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, when he saw the wickedness, the evil, the iniquity that was in Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, I cannot do this thing. I have to talk to Abraham about it first. So, you know, God knows every one of us. He knows us. He knew Abraham. He knew Abraham even before 
he was conceived and he had made a plan that he would make Abraham the father of all nations. And in due course of time, God appeared unto Abraham out of his also his family's house and said, Walk before me, be thou perfect. And you know, Abraham went out of Ur the Chaldees to Canaan, where God directed him to go. And on the way, he took with him his nephew Lot. Lot came along with him on the journey. He just took his nephew along with him on the journey. And on the way, we see that there was strife between Lot's herdsmen and Abraham's herdsmen. And Abraham, being a just man, being a man of peace, he yeah. said to Lot, let there not be strife between us because we are brethren. Yeah. Let us not be quarreling and fighting because we are brethren. But he says, look, the plane is before you. Choose which way you will go. If you go to the east, I will go to the west. If you go to the north, I will go to the south. So he was such a... You know, sometimes we, he, we talk about Abraham, but why Abraham is remembered is because of the qualities that Abraham had. He was a peacemaker. God did not call Lot. He called Abraham. Abraham took Lot with him. But yet for the sake of peace, Abraham tell him, choose which way you will go. And for peace sake, you go that way and I'll go the other way. He could have said, I'm going to the west, you go to the east. But no, he said, you choose. And he gave charge the option. Obviously, Lot now looked down on the plains of Sodom and saw how beautiful it was. And see how, you know, it was a raid and it was, you know, fine and it was, you know, just the ideal place. So he chose Saddam. Sometimes we are to not follow the eyes, but follow the heart. Because as we see when he went down to Sodom, and he was there with his wife and his children, he saw some immorality put it this way if he, he falls he saw some immorality that he the Bible says is he vexed his soul his soul was vexed what he saw in Sodom and Gomorrah it comes in not too far from what we're seeing today what institution have made and how they have changed the law of, of God when God created heaven when he created the earth he created a man and then he said it was not good for man to be alone so let me make him a helpmeet so he made woman out of the rib of Adam the Bible says he put Adam to sleep and took a rib out of his out of him and made him a woman because he says it's not good for man to be alone know that God didn't make two men he made a man and a woman and in these days you find that the society as it is is changing so the law of God is not what he meant it to be. We see same-sex marriage, same-sex union and all these things. It never was the will of God and it even now is not the will of God. And anyone who do that commit atrocity against the Holy God. And this was what was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. There was gross immorality. And God looked down. Whenever there is immorality and sin, there has to be a cry. So God said, the Bible says that God saw, looked down on Sodom. And the Lord said, I shall not hide this thing that I will do. Seeing that Abraham shall surely be a great nation. He had made Abraham a promise that he would multiply 
is seed to exceed that of the stars in the in the sky is seed would exceed the, the sand on the seashore and we can see how God has kept his promise that he has multiplied the seed of Abraham that the Bible says in the seed of Abraham all nations shall be blessed and he said unto he said I will not do this thing before so the Lord said to Abraham the cry of Sodom is great because their sin is grievous our God is a righteous God. He made this world in righteousness. He made man in his own image. That means we are should be righteous. We were created to give glory to God. We were created as a praise to the Lord. We were created to serve the Lord. We were created to honor the Lord. And when we disobey the plan of God, when we disobey the plan of God, we are going against the will of God. And, Amen. you know, we have to, everyone has to make a decision who they will serve. If it's God, it's God. If it's the devil, it's the devil. There's no two way. Have to be God or the devil. But we know God is good and that's why we serve God. Because we know he's good. So God said, now I'm going to go down to the city of Sodom because the cry is great. People are suffering. Anywhere there's sin, there's suffering. Anywhere there's sin, there's doubt and fear. Anywhere there's sin, there, there is grievous. People are suffering. And God saw it. And the cry went up to God. And God said, I will go down and see whether they have done according to the cry and I will come which come unto me if it is or not I will know so the men it was like the angels but God was there turned their face and went towards Sodom but Abraham stood before the Lord you know sometimes when we see what is going on today, we have to stand before the Lord. And we have to stand and make intercession. Because we have to show the world that without God, they have no hope. Without God, there is no hope. Without Jesus, there is no life. Without Jesus, there is no salvation. And people, we have to show, sound the trumpet. Because it's time now that God is looking down and seeing what is happening. So many people are living in fear and doubt. So many people are suffering because of economical um, crisis. And so many people have lost their jobs because of the evil. It's all because of evil. It's all because of iniquity. It's all because the heart of men has turned away from God. And when, when the cry go up to God, God will do something. So the word says that the men turned their face hence and went towards Sodom. And Abraham stood before the Lord. Abraham drew, drew near and said, Will thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? So Abraham was making intercession because you know we as human beings don't like to see people die. We don't like people to suffer. We don't like to see in things you know people are in peril or whatever. So he made intercession. He asked God, "Will thou destroy the righteous with the wicked?" Per adventure there you find fifty righteous in the city. Will thou destroy the city and not spare the place? For the fifty that is righteous. Now the Bible tells us the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. God will not cause the righteous to suffer with the wicked. But if any do not repent, if anyone do not repent and refuse to repent, then the judgment of God is hanging over them. The word is repentance. Turn away 
Follow the word of the, follow the ways of the Lord. Serve the Lord. Honor the Lord. Give him praise. Give him glory. This is what we are made for. We did not make ourselves. God made us for his glory. And you know, someone said that what is happening today with this pandemic, plandemic, scamdemic, whatever you call it. Now, I never said there's not a virus out there. I would never say there's not a virus out there. I would encourage all my brethren, all my friends, everyone I know, to be careful. We have to keep ourselves hygiene, hygienically clean and, you know, do what the, the, the government says about wearing masks and all that. Let's do that. But also remember we serve a God who is able to keep us. And it doesn't matter what is going on around us. The Bible says, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried off in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof be troubled and the urchin moved with, by the swelling thereof, there is a river. The river of peace. So despite all that is going on around us, brethren, there is a peace, a river of peace. Jesus is saying, peace. The word of God says, peace. Despite everything that is going on, let us trust in the Lord. So Abraham made intercession. He said, if you find 50, will you destroy the city? And God says, Peradventure, Abraham said, Peradventure, there be 50 within the city. Will thou destroy and not spare the 50? That be far from thee after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked. God cannot slay the righteous because the Bible says God will pay every man according to his work. If we, if we sow the wind, we will reap the world the whirlwind. If a man live by the sword, he will die by the sword. That's what the Bible says. And the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. God will not punish the righteous with the wicked. So it behooves everyone to be righteous. It behooves everyone to realize that God is God. It, it behooves everyone to serve the Lord. And when we look around and see Abraham made in the session, he went from 50, then he went down, is there 45, will thou destroy the city? God said, I will not destroy the city if I find 45 there. He went down to 30, will you destroy the city? If you find 30 righteous in the city, he said, no. I will not destroy the city. Just 30. He went down to 20. He spoke before Lord, Lord, will thou destroy the city if you find 20 righteous? And God said, no, I will not destroy the city. And he left. And he went down to 10. And he said, behold, I will speak to thee unto thee. Preadventure you found ten. Just ten. Can you imagine? A whole city of people. And you can't find ten people who want to serve God. You can't find ten people who want to be obedient to God. You can't find ten people who want to worship God. Even though the city is full. You can't find 10. And God said he would spare the city if he found 10. Amen. I think God is merciful. He is a merciful God. He's a loving God. And the Lord said, I will not destroy the city if I find 10. God could not find 10. Oh my Lord, you see the time we're living in, you see the heart of man is desperately wicked. The heart of man is absolutely desperately wicked. No love, 
The Bible says, light is coming to the world, but men prefer darkness than light. Can you imagine? Who wants to walk around in darkness? Who wants to live in darkness? When the daylight and we could see another day, we could say, thank you, Lord, I wake up to see another day. We should say that. But you know something? We take everything for granted. God do not want us to take him for granted. God wants us to serve him. And so, you know, um, in Psalms 14 and verse 2, the Bible says, The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there is any which did understand and see God. So God in heaven is looking down upon the children of men, looking down on the earth, looking down on the people who dwell upon the earth, looking down on man who he created in his own image for his glory, looking down and see, the Bible says, see if there's any that did understand and see God. If the man heart is not want to see God. Man's heart is in themselves. It's a selfish, perverse, evil heart. And God will, it's not the will of God. Our God is God of love. And God expects us to show love. God expects us to show righteousness. God expects us to be obedient to his word. No, the Bible says in, in Psalm 14 verse 3, it says, They are all gone aside. What a, what a way. They all together become filthy. You see, you see, the thing is, we don't have to do anything to become filthy. Filthy is normal. But for us to serve God, it takes effort. It takes a willing mind. It takes a willing heart. Just do nothing. And you will become filthy. But if you determine, I'm going to serve the Lord. Joshua said, ask for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. It says, there is none that do it good. No, not one. Oh my Lord. Not one is grateful. Not one. Look on the earth. Not one is grateful. Not one is saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you that for the breath I breathe. And, you know, sometimes when we hear about people who has got this, um, this COVID-19 and when it gets to a very bad stage, um, you know, we can see that they, so they say they have a breathing problem. But if we look after ourselves, brethren, if we take care of ourselves and we trust in God, God will fix it for us. The breath that we breathe is valuable. But we take it for granted. If we get up tomorrow morning and we find we can't breathe, what will we do? We will be crying out. And the God give us breath of life. Every day we wake up, we breathe. We are clothed. We are sheltered. And we can't say thank you, Jesus. We can't say thank you, Lord. We can't serve the Lord. We don't have any time to say thank you, Jesus. It says, have, now in verse 4 of Psalms 14, it says, Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge. Iniquity. Sin. Unrighteousness. Evil. Disobedient. That is what is going on. If we are away from God, we are away from knowledge because God is knowledge. If we do not serve God, the Bible says the fool said in his heart, there is no God. Anyone who says there is no God, they are foolish. Because without God, if, if, if God don't wake us up tomorrow, we will not wake up. It's not the alarm clock that's going to wake us up. It's God. 
God said, my mercy is renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And every morning we wake up, we should say, thank you, Jesus. We should say, I, I, I love you, Lord. And imagine the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. In that God, Jesus was in his glory. And he saw that man was going headlong down to destruction, to death. And to a Christless eternity. And God, because of the love, he said, I will go down. Prepare for me a body. I want to go down to save my people. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And should we serve him? Should we love him? Should we glorify him? Should we honor him? That he's made such a great sacrifice for us. That he came and he bled and he died. He suffered on the cross. He was ridiculed, he was scorned, he was spit upon, he wore a crown of corn, a crown of thorns for us. Then they nailed him to the cross. Oh hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. They nailed him to the cross. And they ridiculed him while he was yet on the cross. They mocked him. They said, If you be the Son of God, come down, save yourself. You save others, hallelujah. But Jesus said, but the writer says, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Oh, praise the Lord. That's a reason why we need to serve him. That's a reason why we need to glorify him. So David went on to say in Psalm 14, have the workers of iniquity no knowledge. And this is why we have to pray and make intercession, even as Abraham did. Abraham made intercession for Sodom and Gomorrah, but the evil was so great. It was taken over, it was overflowing. You know, when a cup is full, it's full. When it's overflowing, that's another matter. And right now, if we look at the way the world is, nobody wants to talk about the Lord. And if Jesus was here now, and they had a choice between Jesus and anyone, they would say, the world would say, crucify him. There's not much change. From the days when God told um, Noah to build an ark, there's not much change. The heart of man is wicked. God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah because of the wickedness because the heart of man go cold and there was no love and the lovers died and there was no light they were living in darkness so the workers of iniquity has no knowledge they eat up my people like they eat bread and call not upon the Lord they are all in fear for the Lord God is in the generation of the righteous. Brethren, love the Lord. We have here a God who can keep us in this wicked world, in this sinful world, in this perverse world, in this world of viruses and everything else that is going on. We have a God that can keep us and preserve us. Because the Lord preserved the righteous. And in Psalm 1 and verse 4 it says, The ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not like the wicked. God will not treat the godly as he treats the wicked. There has to be a different way. And God has to look at, God look at the godly in a separate way. The ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff that the wind drive it away. Unrighteous. There's no the wages of sin. The wages of sin is death, and this is why we have to preach repentance. Repentance must be preached, because unless one repent, they will go to a Christless eternity. Hell was not created for man; it was created for the devil and his angel. But if we, if we do not obey God, if we do not serve God, if we do not repent, He has opened the door of opportunity for us. 
He has opened the door of salvation. We can go in and have an in and out and find pasture because of what Jesus has done. He has done everything. God has done everything for us. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So in the congregation of the righteous, sinners will not stand. God will not put the sinner with the, un with the righteous. God will not combine them together. God will separate because the Bible says when he come, he shall separate the, the chaff from the wheat and the goats from the sheep. I love God. And you know something, when we see what's happening today, brethren, it's only because of our loved ones who are not saved that we are here making intercession. So Lord have mercy upon my relatives who are not saved. Lord, help them, Lord, to see you. Help them to understand. Help them to come to the knowledge of you, Lord. Help them to see you. Help them to, oh, praise the name of the Lord. So we are here as intercession, interceding as Abraham interceded. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. God know every one of us who serve him in spirit and in truth. God know every one of us who makes sacrifice to fall down on our knees and call upon him. God knows every one of us who are making intercession on behalf of our loved ones, on behalf of the world, on behalf of the leaders of the world. Because they are lost. Without Jesus, they are lost. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24, it says, For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands which are the figures of the true, but into the heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Christ has not entered in the holy place made with hands. Because before Jesus, it was the priest, the, the high priest, who could go into the holies of holies to offer sacrifice for our sins. It was the priest, the high priest, but Jesus did not go into that holy place made with hands, but which was a figure of the true, which was a figure of what was to come. But Jesus, God, Jesus Christ went into heaven itself with his blood, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So Jesus died and he took his own blood, even as the high priest in the days of old would go into the holies of holies with the blood of lamb and he goats and turtle dove and he would offer them a sacrifice before the Lord. But Christ has not gone into that holy place made with hands, but he's gone into the heaven itself. And he stood before in the presence of God with his blood, offering his blood for our sins. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, wonderful. What a thing. And that's why we have redemption. And that's why we have freedom from sin. And that's why we can glorify God. And this is why we can say, come what may. The Lord is with me. Surely goodness and mercies shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus has opened the doors that we now can approach God. And before it was not so, because before it was only the high priest who could go into the holies of holies, but Jesus, when he died on the cross, the Bible tells me the vein of the temple was rent in twain, and that was given us the access to go in to the holy place and call upon the Lord. It was the blood of Jesus that did that. Open the gates that we can call upon God and we can and He is there 
making intercession for us. For it says, For then he offered, often suffer since the foundation of the world. Now, once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by sacrifice of himself. It is wonderful when we think about it that the Jesus, the death of Jesus on the cross has taken away the sins of the world. It's wonderful. Our sins have been remitted, have been paid for. We owe a debt we could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. Oh, praise God. But he gave us, hallelujah, salvation, freedom from sin. So now we can say we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Because of him who died for us. Hallelujah. The Bible says it is, it, is, it is appointed unto man once to die. But after this is a judgment. And this is why repentance is so important. John the Baptist came and he was preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Men don't like to hear the word repent. If you say repent to them, it's like you're swearing to them because they love darkness. They love unrighteousness. So when you say repent to the sinner, if you don't want to serve God, it's like you're swearing at him. But the Bible says repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. It is here. And it says, it is appointed unto man once to die. Once we die, we die and we die. And the, the, the word says, will a tree fall, there will he lie. So if a sinner die in his sin, he has to wait for that judgment. Yes. Amen. Amen. That judgment will come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it behooves us to continue to hold on to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because God will not judge the righteous with the wicked. So it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him, he shall appear a second time without sin unto salvation. And this is why we say Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back again. Amen. And we say amen. Even so, Lord Jesus. Even so, Lord Jesus, come. Because if we, we are blessed and we are in a situation and we are in a world where we don't see all the suffering that is going on. But brethren, if we look, if we take a picture of what is going on in the world, there's gross suffering, there's gross injustice, there's gross unrighteousness. There's evil in every corner of the world. Man has not a desire to seek God. But they rather to serve the devil. They rather to serve darkness. So he says, Unto them who look for him, he shall appear a second time without sin unto salvation. So he's coming back again. The word of, you know something, I look from Genesis to Revelation and Revelation has, tells us about what what was and what is and what is to come so revelation covered genesis all the way back to revelation it tells us from the beginning until the end and we, we were in the word bible says jesus is a lamb that slain, so was slain from the foundation of the world so before the world before sin god had prepared himself a lamb to save us now going on, in um, Hebrews 18, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was called out of the place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Now that's an important word, obeyed. He obeyed God. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. So God says, rise. Go to a land that I will show thee. 
And Abraham got up because when we know the voice, when we hear the voice of God, we must know the voice of God. And when we obey the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, obedience to the voice of the Lord come with a promise. That he said, I will be with you. I will save you. I will keep you. I will provide for you. All we need to do is obey the voice of God. And Abraham did. Abraham obeyed God. He said he obeyed and went out, not knowing. Imagine you go and you don't know where you're going, but because God said go, go, he went. He was obedient. By faith he, he sojourned in the land of promise as a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heir of the same promise. For the Bible says, for he looked for a city which had foundation. Now that, look, think about this now. He looked for a city which has foundation. And that would tell me that where we are, there's no foundation. That would tell me that the earth that we are living on now has no foundation. And they lived on this earth, but they were looking for a city which had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. And through faith, it says, say we receive strength to conceive a seed, which and deliver the child when she was past age. Because she judged him faithful, that promise. You see, when we believe God, she was past age. But God said she shall be a child. What is, what is impossible to God? The God we serve. What is hard for God to do? You tell me what is hard for God to do. When she was past age, and she didn't even believe when the angel said to him, you shall bring forth a child. She laughed. And some of us sometimes when we think uh, about what God can do, we, we say, well, well, but God is able. And from that seed, it says, sprang their even one. And him as good as dead. As many as the stars in the sky in multitude. So out of that one child that God gave Abraham, it says sprang as many as the stars in the sky because God said so. Whatever God said, that is what God is going to do. So we as children of God need to just stand upon the promises of God. So we need to do. Stand on His promises because they are sure. Now it says the child that the child that um, God promised Abraham. It says he was as good as dead, because God said to Abraham, "That child, that only child that you have, take him and offer him as a sacrifice unto me upon the mountain." And Abraham obeyed God. Can you imagine the faith that Abraham had? and the trust that he had in God. That if he said, if God says so, whatever it is, I have to do it because God said so. And he took his one son upon the mountain and was about to offer him a sacrifice. And he said he was raised his hand with the knife, made the altar, put his son on the altar, and was about to slay his one and only son. And that was just showing us what God did when he sent Jesus down to earth to save us. His one son he sent to save us. He sacrificed his son to save us. And that Abraham was doing, it was an was a, was a image of what was to come. Because Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, Isaac. And he made the altar and he raised his hand to kill his own son. And they heard a voice that Abraham, kill, lay not thy hand upon thy son. Hallelujah. Because God 
knew he was a man who would obey him. Oh, praise the Lord. You see what obedience is, my brethren? We only need to obey God. We only need to obey, and we are children of God by faith. Oh, praise the Lord. Let us see, brethren, let us see our salvation. Let us see the place that God has gone to prepare for us. If we even had a slight glimpse of what God has done for us, of the place that he has prepared for us, we would be shouting on the hills of glory right down here. We will be walking and praising God right down here. We will be singing hallelujah right down here. If we realize what God has gone to prepare for us, what God has prepared for us, He said, in my house, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I will go and prepare a place for you that where I am, He may be also. Brethren, all we need to do is to give God praise and give Him glory, serve Him. And be as Abraham, make intercession because we are down here. We are here to make intercession. Christ Jesus is there as the, as the, as the mediator for us. And we are here to mediate for this world, for those that are lost in sin. May God help us, brethren. May God bless us, brethren. May God keep us, brethren. May God cause his face to shine upon us. May God strengthen us. May God enlighten us. May God show us our purpose. And may God give us that determination and that faith that we can stand on his words and that we will fear not. Because the God of hosts, the Lord of hosts is with us. Finally, it says, truly if they were mindful of the winds they came out, they may have had opportunity to return so so Abraham Isaac and Jacob they turned their back to the world and they turned their face to the Lord and they served the Lord and so much to say of these patriots and prophets but brethren we are of the seed and we are here in their stead they are not here but we are here to represent them before God but it says but now they desire a better country that is heavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to call their God for he has prepared for them a city hallelujah brethren God has prepared for us a city let us not faint for we have received the promise let us faint not but let us go steadfast serving the Lord trusting in him Continue to give him the praise and the glory. Continue to make intercession for the world, for the leaders of the world, for those in darkness. Let us continue to ask God to have mercy because we are the light of the world and God is depending on us. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. God bless you, my brethren. God bless you. I will come to the end and I want to give God thanks for every one of you who have joined our teleconference. And may God bless and keep you and may God continue to cause his face to shine upon you and trust in him because he will never fail us. Let us go forward in faith. We are children of faith because we are we are are from our father Abraham we are of the root of Abraham because Abraham trusted in God and Abraham was obedient to God and Abraham served God in faith and in truth and God these are the people that God wants God wants us to serve him may the Lord good Lord bless you as we continue to give him praise and to give him glory in Jesus name amen God bless you, my brethren. God bless every one of you. Thank you all. Um, may God bless and keep you. But God bless you. I just want to say a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks. I give you praise. 
I give you glory for all the one of your children who are listening on this teleconference, Lord God. I pray that you give us grace and give us more strength to continue to serve you and to trust you, Lord, and not to doubt because we know, Lord Jesus, that you there's nothing impossible for you to do. And once we believe and trust in you, you will not fail us. Hallelujah. David said, once I was young and now I'm old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken no is seed begging bread we thank you lord for being mindful of us we pray you bless everyone bless our families those that are not saved lord i pray will touch them those that are sick i pray will touch them those that are bereaved right now because of one reason that i pray will touch them lord have mercy upon us bind us together help us to look up to you and continue in fellowship hallelujah serving you in spirit and in truth we give you thanks we give you praise and we give you glory and do you remember their brother David and his son uh, Marcus, Rihanna, and the mother, Lord God. We believe and we know that you will touch them and you will heal them. We have confidence, Lord God, that you never fail. And we have confidence that you say, ask what you will and it shall be done. Hallelujah. And we're asking you, Lord, to touch them, Lord. Grant them complete healing. Hallelujah. Complete deliverance. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And we claim the victory right now. We claim the deliverance right now. And we claim complete healing right now in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks and praise. Bless our pastor and bless all the members of our, our church and every, all the one we need to pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, for thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you, my brethren. God bless you. Miss Ava, God bless you, Miss Ava. God bless you all. God bless you. I see my son Delion is there. Delion, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my son. Good to know that you're there. God bless you. We hope we'll see you soon. God bless everyone.